Thank you. So everybody, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes for a moment. Oh, sorry. Are we? Can we go to the first slide? Oh, well, hello. <laughs> Very nice to meet all of you. Close your eyes, everybody, and imagine something that brings you fear. Maybe a tiger. I don't know. Okay? Stay with me. And now keep your eyes closed and imagine something that makes you happy. Maybe a little kitten. Okay, now open your eyes. From a neuroscience perspective, what you guys just did was really amazing. Your neurons allowed you to scan through your memories, filter them through, experience them all over again. Um, and very different emotions in quick succession. And as a stem cell researcher, I feel very qualified to say, I think our cells are geniuses. There are billions upon billions of them living in your body. Most of them aren't even human, and they are conspiring every moment of your life to keep you alive. And from my perspective as a cardiac tissue engineer, we're searching for this proverbial fountain of youth, this idea that we can engineer spare parts for the human body to help us extend our lives. So how do we grow these cardiac tissues? Well, it turns out if you take some cells, keep them sterile, keep them moist. Many kinds of cells can be grown in labs. But getting these cells to form more complex tissues like the heart is really much more of a challenge because the cells in a petri dish are homesick. And so we need to do a better job at copying nature in order to get them to survive and thrive. And so we call this the biomimetic paradigm. And for the heart, the things that we copy most in the lab are the electrical signals that get cells to beat and the perfusion of oxygen and nutrients throughout the tissue. And this is a piece of engineered tissue that I engineered. Uh, it looks like, it's like the size of a mini marshmallow. We engineer the system. The cells engineer the tissue. Okay, and as an engineer, this is a bit of an identity crisis because, wow, the cells are doing all the work. And it begs the question, what other kinds of unsung heroes live inside our bodies, conspiring to keep us alive every day, despite everything that we do? And this is something that I like to explore, a question that I like to explore in my own yoga practice. And one of the things I like to do most is, you know, do headstands here, there, everywhere. Play this trick on my, play a trick on my body. Um, what is the trick, you ask, besides acrobatics? Um, well, the trick that I like to perform, it, it exploits this baroreflex, baroreceptors. They're little pressure sensors inside the carotid artery of your neck. And when you get upside down, the blood goes back into the artery, tricks these pressure sensors into thinking, blood pressure is too high, kick it down a notch. And you know what happens then? The body relaxes. And you're like, why do I want to relax? I have cockroaches to stomp on. I have dry cleaning. I have so much stuff to do. And you know what? The panic is kind of fun. Maybe it is. But what, what happens is that we're playing a trick on our body. We're tricking ourselves that with every single beep of the smartphone, there is a tiger lurking behind it. Fight or flight. Okay, we all know what happens, palpitations, chest pains, adrenaline. It's kind of fun. Those are the things that happen. But these are the things that don't happen. You don't filter your blood. You don't make babies. You don't digest your food. You don't do any of those things that can be put off until the tiger's gone. But what if the tiger's never gone? And what if the tiger's actually just a little kitten that has tiger stripes? How do we know the difference? How do we train our neurons to be able to see the trick? And that brings me to my second point. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it turns out that when we're looking at images, um, the orientation of the images has a lot to do with what we see. So mentally, flip these pictures upside down in your mind. Okay. Did you see what you expected to see? <laughs> and think back a moment ago to what your, what your tiger was, what you imagined, and, and try and revisit that and see, was there maybe a kitten in there? instead. And you know what? Maybe there isn't a kitten in there, okay? But just that act of revisiting that memory is, is, um, is playing another trick on your body. What is that? Well, opening that inquisitive part of your brain, the part of your brain that is much less likely to be frustrated. We all know the adage, fear kills curiosity, but I will posit, what about killing fear 
well, that curiosity, sorry, let's kill our fear with curiosity, okay? And as Stormy will demonstrate, although with something I'm terrified of, which I would never do this, this is horse poop, sniff, sniff, flip upside down, roll around in it, and smile. And so I ask, you know, as an experiment, next time you feel challenged, next time you feel like there's a tiger there, or maybe just for fun, throw yourself upside down, Throw your challenge upside down and see what happens. And I would love to hear what happens for you. Thank you.